Welcome, everyone. Oh, I forgot to put on Hi. lipstick. Oh, okay, it's Hi. fine. <laughs> I am so excited. Welcome, comadres. Welcome to our very special edition of um, Lunch Break. So for those of you who um, are just joining us for the first time, Lunch Break is a series that we started doing a couple weeks ago now. Today is like fully two full weeks. And so um, we were really thinking about, okay, what's going on in this moment? How can, as a community, we contribute to, um, to fellow entrepreneurs and just to the broader community in a way that fits our spirit as Las Comadres? And we just started to think about all the wisdom and the support and the, sh the uh, awesome and valuable shared experiences that we have to share with the community. And so we figured, we came up with this idea of lunch break where every single weekday at noon, we jump on here and we go live with expert comadres on different topics. So we've talked about everything. Like just this week alone, we talked about branding. We talked about boosting your immune system with food. We talked about all the different loans that are available to small business owners and how to apply for them. So it like the, it's like all over the place in terms of topics, but we're really trying to tackle things that are going to be not only useful, but also fill your soul and make you happy during these times and help us all get some perspective. And I'm extra excited about today because today we are talking about one of my, one of my passions, which is interior design. And so we're talking about um, a situation that all of us are finding ourselves in, most of us who are able to work from home are finding ourselves in, whether we like it or not. And it is all about how to create a gorgeous home office that brings you joy and makes you happy and helps you be productive um, to the extent that you can and are able to in these crazy circumstances with maybe like screaming kids in the corner and a boss that doesn't understand what it's like to work from home and just kind of managing our lives these days. But today is going to be a super fun and visual session where we get to um, dive into beautiful spaces and talk about how they make us feel and how we can um, really develop that sense of style within ourselves, reflected in our um, spaces and create spaces that allow us to, to, be, to create. And so I want to introduce the incredible women that we have with us today. These are three of our comadres. We have Melissa Perez Fernandez, who is an interior stylist. We have Giselle. Hi. Hey, sorry. Giselle <laughs> has in charge. Giselle's an interior designer and art director. And we have Rebecca Portuondo, who is a realtor with Berkshire Hathaway. Welcome, Queens. <laughs> Hi. So excited that you're here today. And so every single um, uh, lunch break session, we started with a question that is a very comadres question, because in this community, we're very much about keeping the perspective of what's truly important. And if and there's anything this moment has done is help us get the perspective of what's truly important. So um, our question is, what are you grateful for right now? So whoever would like to jump in. Honestly, I'm just grateful that I'm not alone in a house and that I have my family with me because there's a lot of people that are really lonely and alone. I had to move my grandmother out of a situation. So like, just not being alone under, like you have people to wake up to, like, you're just not alone. There's people that are, have been in their apartments for weeks, just alone. Nobody's hugged them. Nobody's kissed them. Nothing. Yeah. So, you know, even though I want to choke out my family sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you're or not drunk that either. Kids. I mean, it's fine. I'm, I'm, it's fine. Um, <laughs> I'm happy that they're here because, It'd, it'd be a very lonely journey if it was just me here, you know? Yeah. 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 So like even the, the people that get on our nerves, they still, <laughs> we're still very yeah, much for them. <laughs> Here's my get on my nerves. Oh, right hi, Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what did I do wrong again? He's like, can't do anything right. You don't uh, want to kill your husband during the yeah, morning. Yeah a solid foundation like, <laughs> like one through three it was like this is great and then like now week four it's a little like okay I I get this side of the house you get that side of the house oh god oh thank yes. you he's a good man though oh chocolate. yes yeah so I guess you're grateful for chocolate right now <laughs> I'm grateful for snacks I'm also grateful for fresh air I mean I can't even imagine being in New York right now 
or, you know, like I can walk outside to my backyard and get some fresh air, walk the dog around the neighborhood. Um, God, I mean, that's keeping yeah. us sane right now, truly. Yeah. Um, so just like the ability to step outside and breathe fresh air and sit outside for as long as you want. Um, I've probably never been more grateful for that, truthfully, yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. I think, I think we all kind of take it for granted. Like, not take it for granted, but you, you kind of forget you're so wrapped up in, like, your own little world, and you kind of forget what the outside world sort of looks like. And when you've got screaming kids for years on end and, you know, you do live in a house that you have a yard, sometimes you don't think about that. And, and just to stop and think about it and realize, wow, yeah, this is, this is really a different situation for a lot of people. So um, I think those are awesome. Mine, I think, is a, in the beginning of the year, I had given myself a word. I wanted to focus the... Uh, I wanted to focus my all my attention on and connection, and I wanted to connect with the people that I loved, yeah, um, and I respected, and I really wanted to spend like real quality time. And as horrible as the situation is, I think, you know, I'm I'm taking that little piece that I've been able to connect really, really on on such a deeper level with my husband, with my kids, like even with the dog, the whole thing. It's just been <laughs> so, you know, pressing the pause button was great. Yeah. At least, you know, in that perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. I have to say for me, I am definitely like, I'm with you, Giselle. Like I, I have never loved Miami more. Like I didn't grow up yeah. here. Um, but I have never, like, I feel like this moment has allowed me to like really see what is like, it's so beautiful. We're leaving, we live in paradise. Like yeah. we really do. It is so. And like, the weather beautiful. has been perfect. It's been incredible. Like to be able to sit in a backyard and like enjoy fresh air and work from my backyard. And you know, yeah. it's just, there's, there's just so much so much to be grateful it's like such a blessing to have like fresh air becomes the thing you're grateful for and so like it's really yeah. incredible how much perspective this has brought and so we um dive into all of what today is about and these amazing women have actually shared really cool images um that we're going to be going through a little bit later just to kind of really because what we're the conversation that we're having is so um, about something so visual so we wanted to really kind of show you as we go along but leading into that I, I thought we could just have a more um like i curious and open conversation about um actually like first of all i'm interested in like how you all got into this because this is my dream career i feel like at some point i'm going to study interior design just because like <laughs> it's it's something that i always loved and i've always geeked out on and you guys know i do feng shui so it's like a big part of um, it's a big part of who I am and the things that I love, like the, all, the only books I buy, like hardcover are the like design copy books. So, right. yeah. So, so how did you all get, and I know that not, not all of you are designers per se, but I feel like all of you have this beautiful eye for, for style and design and for putting things together. So I'm just curious kind of like where it came from and how you got into it. I mean, I think for with me, I'm going to let them talk on this because I'm not an interior designer. I think my aesthetic, uh, I've done some construction and stuff. My aesthetic is just my own taste. It tends to bring me clients because I think my, my, I have a good vision for fixer uppers. And I think when you take clients to see fixers, they want you to give them a vision of what it could be. Um, and I think that's, that's really where, you know, where I shine, but yes. I mean, I'll let them speak. Cause that's, I'm not like, that's not, I'm not the yeah. interior designer. I can tell you what things look like and I have a website and you can see what I did in my own house, but you know, and I, you have, you have the eye. Hey, though. Yeah, I have an eye, but I don't have what an interior designer is really good at is they could take somebody's personality and somebody's taste and adjust their own to make that client happy like yeah. and work with them. I have yeah. a very specific taste, which is mine. But if you were to go like uber contemporary modern, I, I would be like a deer in headlights. Yeah, yeah. 
And you know, it, so I that's what that interior designers do. Like they can be a chameleon yes. for design. Like I, I think that there's, um, there's like a really cool point though, about the way that you do what you do. And so like, mm -hmm. like, so everybody's Instagrams are listed in the post, so you can jump in and check them out. But I think like, Reve is such a great example of um, taking this thing that she loves, that is a passion of hers um, and highlighting it and using it to market her business. Correct. So like there's like you see Reva's feed and she, and it it's almost like it's an interior designer's feed because it's so right. beautifully like styled and photographed and that is like part of her brand but it's also part of helping her clients envision what their homes can look like. And so a lot of people that hire me will go to my website. I will tell them, "Why don't you go to my website? See if you like my vision and my taste and get back to me yes and then they'll go and then they'll see and then they'll decide either way especially if they're looking for a fixer upper yeah and, and then, the process i tend to recommend them people they can work with for design because i know people who aesthetically have designers who have my similar taste yes. so that's how i come into play as a realtor slash you know i have good yeah. taste people would think that you know yeah. so yeah, yeah. It has to be for you, Rere, like such a such an added value to what you do because there's not a lot of realtor. Yeah, realtors can style, you know, a, an air, you know, a house and put it together and and present to the client. Look, this is where the living room would be and where the you know you could create a right. breakfast area. But the fact that you have your aesthetic is so expansive, it has to be a huge, huge like. It, it has been without me wanting it to be. Right. It sort of like fell, I sort of fell into Happy it. Happy side effect. Happy yeah. side effect. Yes. And like Gabby was saying, and I think Giselle, because um, Giselle has such a great eye. Giselle met with me. I started Instagram only like a year ago. Remember Giselle? Like maybe a year and yeah. a half ago. We've I was a long way. Now you need to do mine. Now I like suck at it. I was on every social media platform. But one thing Giselle taught me was, you might have a niche, let's say you're a designer, or whatever, but really just put yourself out there in other ways. Like I put fashion, I put my kids, I put design, I put tips on real estate, I put everything. And yeah. then people really end up falling in love with the person and then they end up hiring you. Yes, it's yes, really yes. not about what you do as much as who you are. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's please. what how I've noticed I've gotten clients. Like people are like okay, I want to hire you because I want to work with you. They, yeah. they sort of learn my personality through my account. Not so much, look at me, look at the house I'm listing. They don't even really care. Like, they don't even care. They yeah. don't even ask me, what are your listings? What are you doing? They're just like, I just like your, you. Yep, yep. And I think yeah. that's the key to social media. Like, who are you? If people like fall in love up. with you, you can sell them a block of ice. Like, yes. that's it. Yes, they, <laughs> that's um, it. They'll trust you and it's a done deal. Awesome. So, Melissa, yeah. how do you, how have you been experiencing it or how, how did you get into all of this and start doing this work? Um, I got into it. So I'm not a, a licensed interior designer either, which there's a really specific differentiation between the two. And I always like to be really upfront about that because um, I respect the people that went to interior design school. It is a super rigorous uh, schooling. It's a rigorous uh, study you know, to, to get your certification and pass the NCIDQ and all of those things. So, you know, there's a place, especially today for all of us. And yeah. I think, I think whether you are, you know, a licensed interior designer where you're doing more the architectural sort of aspect of the interior design, or you're taking a project from, you know, the, the bottom to the end, um, there's there's that and then there's people that are buying homes and maybe you know Rere, you weren't the person that they got lucky enough to to hire to sell them that house and when they get there they bring all their stuff in and they're like oh my god this doesn't this doesn't right. fit this doesn't how how did it look okay over there and now everything's out of place so you know there's there's a there's a place for everybody so for me i got into it i didn't go to school for this as far as like my bachelor's degree i have a chemistry degree so <laughs> it's very what I ended up doing, but um, it started out when I got married and I had my own home and I started to, you know, put the house together and then friends started to look and be like, 
wow, okay, this girl knows what she's doing and maybe she can help me. And, and so then, you know, through the years, it was sort of like word of mouth. And then um, a couple of years back, I decided to get an official certification. So I went through an online program. Um, I got my certification. Um, I really, I really, you know, clawed my way into this business. And yeah. I don't put myself out there as much as I would like and all of that. But, the, and I don't have a lot of followers on Instagram or anything, but the followers I have are quality. And, you know, I've thankfully had business since, you know, I decided that this was what I wanted to do. Um, for real, I have studied, I study, I always am learning, I'm always taking courses and classes. And, you know, I'm always trying to just better myself. And, and that's, yeah. that's how I got into the business. And so if there's anybody out there that really is, has a passion for it, like you, Gabby, just yes. do it. Yes. You know, it's one of those things that yeah, I'm like, going to clone myself and do it. That's <laughs> very important. And nowadays, more important, I think, is the business of interior design. Because yeah. you can have great taste and you can, you know, have an awesome style. But if you don't know how to run your business and that aspect of the job, you, you can't, it can't be successful no matter what you do. So, you know, I've had to, I've had to learn all of that really the tough way too, because I'm not very good. So I want to I want to chime in with a couple comments um, from Erica. We got respect 100 percent respect the credential. Be upfront, and people will still resonate with you. And then Kat is here saying, "I follow you, Melissa. Your account is gorgeous and inspirational." <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for sharing. How about you, Giselle? I know you have an interesting recent story. Yeah, yeah. It's a funny. Um, I've always kind of been like even through my early 20s, like when I was getting my bachelor's, I flipped back and forth from interior design to communications, like mm -hmm. I think three times at FSU. Um, so I did a little bit of both and I ended up with an interdisciplinary um, major, Degree? which is okay. so funny because I literally couldn't commit to one over the other. Um, and to so the kind of <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's just, I don't know. I'm like a multi-hyphenate. I like having, like, dipping my toes into multiple things. I always have, obviously, all within a very specific box, which is, like, the arts, creativity, um, beauty. I'm very visual. I could never, like, copyright or do anything involving chemistry or anything along mm -hmm. those lines. Um, I can barely bake. So, yeah, I, I've just always loved the two. And then right out of college, I went straight into interior design for work. I worked for Bimini Bay Resort and I assisted in, you know, some of the island work there, like Rockwell Island and some of the houses there, which was a really interesting experience um, because it was all about, it wasn't like a home in Miami or a home in Florida. It was literally about finding pieces that then can be shipped to a little tiny island. Um, so it was very limiting and I learned a lot. And um, eventually, I, I think I worked there for like a year or so. And I kind of phased out of it and I was just like completely wanting nothing to do with design. Um, yeah. And I went straight into the branding side of things. And I worked in that for a while. I still did little projects here and there um, on the side, like my friend's houses and like their apartments and like little things as they started to uh, buy and rent and things like that um, in our like mid 20s and then um, my husband and I got our first home uh, about two years ago and that was like we we didn't gut it but we did a ton of construction and I just fell completely in love with all of the process again um, I mean I had known for a while I was like I think in my fifth year of like knee deep in like the branding art direction side of things and I was just like telling my husband, like, I want to go back to design. I want to go back to design. And like the little projects just weren't fulfilling. Like I wanted it to be consuming. Like it was just like clear that I was totally uninjured. Like I would still do the art direction stuff and it was still fun, but it was just not nearly as um, exciting to me as the design stuff. So I went back to school um, last year I went through a super rigorous program that's like super intense just to like re-educate myself on more like of the intensive, interior. right? Yeah, at UM. Um, it was a lot about like interior architecture and some of the rules that like just to retrain yourself is like 
holy shit it's a lot to remember I'm still like I have all of my textbooks and I still read them at night because there's just so much to it um so that I was able to get like my certification for it and then yeah I, I like jumped right back in as of last year and I have like three projects going on right now all residential um so they're still like in my comfort zone and I haven't I would love to get into like a, a boutique hotel is like every designer's I mean at least for me that's like the dream so it's like the 10 year plan, but for now, um, <laughs> I, I, I love it. I, I literally like, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's like an obsession for me. I, it feeds my soul and I absolutely awesome. love everything about it. So. Awesome. Just, uh, when this, when this Corona thing ends, maybe we could take a trip to Santa Monica proper and go see. Oh, are you doing her master class? I am. I'm taking oh, it. Oh my God. Amazing. I'm Dude. really like, who is this? Sir, she's just like the god of interior designers. She's she's incredible. Um, maybe we could like link to her. Now we talk about like, doing our shrines. I should have one to her. Like, oh, I, I love it. Do. I love it. This, this woman's incredible, and she has a math. She, they finally came out with a masterclass for interior design, and Beautiful. it's so fun. It's like very easy oh, and fun. snacky. And yeah, so that might be what I do. Yeah, you you, you would love it, Gabby. it. You would love it. It's so fun, and you just. Just to hear her talk and just see how her thought process of how she goes through, you know, her stuff and all that. And then I'm just like, yeah, but only you can just take a bunch of I know. Rocks and put them on a wallpaper <laughs> and put it like, and make it like it. a beautiful yeah. like credenza. It's ridiculous. Exactly. And no, yeah, like, no. I'm like, sure, go ahead and do that. I know, like, I know. We have a very lively crew today. Um, Erica <laughs> saying, I want to read from Giselle's architectural library. <laughs> and also that her family, that her family's in hospitality con and cons cons hospitality consulting, including boutique hotels, so you can hit her up. Nice. Oh God! So Thank the you. ten-year plan might be like yeah, uh, I'll call you in uh, in like a few a years. Let me get a few more plan. houses, make yes. make a few mistakes, and like yes. these houses, and then, and then go. Yeah, yeah. Maybe awesome. we can all partner up on this one. Cool. <laughs> so I feel like um like for the rest of our conversation, we should we can have it in the context of um specifically like the space where you I don't even necessarily want to always call it a home office because clearly here's a situation we're like all living right now right there are a good number of people especially people whoever is watching from home right now is likely watching from home where they are working from and people it this can range from anything from oh I have a little garden house in the back that I've converted to an office to like, I have this little corner of the dining room table yeah. and yeah. this is it, right? And like with all the potential distractions and everything that comes from that. And um, although there are some of us who are very much used to working from home and are blessed to have a separate space that is a home office, um, I think that there's a lot of people that have just been like immediately thrust into this. And I think now that we're in, I think week four-ish of this, it for a lot of people it's it's been an opportunity to say like okay well it looks like we have a few more weeks of this how do i like where do i even start because maybe the setup that they have right now is too stressful or it's messy and it's like like there's just like a lot going on a lot of distractions so what advice do you have kind of like to kick it off um what advice do you have on how somebody can get started in just like thinking through what they need and setting up a home office space that would work for them. Um, I'll kick this one off. I think first and foremost, it's like exactly what I had to do coming back to working from home. I've been renting office space for the last year and a half. So we have um, an empty bedroom, but it's literally like become a hoarding room for extra vintage. Like I'll find like a, you know, a chair at a, an estate sale and it, it, it becomes this hoarding room for all of your crap storage. and like there's yeah yeah it's, it's literally a storage facility a glorified storage facility and it's the least like we try to work from there and it's like the least inspiring room so what ends up being the best room in the house is this just main room we have a teeny tiny house it's just like great lighting but it's like there's our dining table this is my living room and that's my house so I set up a desk like right over here next to my window and I'll kind of a show nice you. little corner yeah, it's just like a little corner. It's just That's a desk, a little inspo. Like there's not, you know, my house is, is really small. And I, I think it's just like clearing the clutter. Like if there's even 
all you need really is like what four feet and you have a desk so if you can find any corner of the house and even if you don't have a desk if you can get like a floating shelf at ikea and like install it on your wall or i mean really anything that can just give you a glorified space i think like using your dining table and stuff like that if you have a nice long one where people can still eat then that works but at least for me it was driving me crazy when it was like lunch and dinner time and like it was like cleaning out the 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 computers and the cables and all this stuff like it was driving me absolutely crazy so so you would think, recommend that people to the extent that they that it's possible is it might be better to get a small desk than to multi yeah. use the dining room table that that's my recommendation if you can make like we normally here have my a record player a little table with a record player and we have like a poster here we moved all of it into like a closet, into a storage space, into the garage temporarily in order to set up a little temporary desk situation. Got it. So if you can, you know, feng shui it up a little and move things around mm -hmm. and set up some sort of little desk area, I think for me, it's been like a saving grace. And it feels oh. like that's where I go to work. And it, it yes. gives you a little bit of that routine um, right. that you're cool. missing at home. Cool. I think that that, I think what Giselle just said, I think that that's key to like finally coming to terms with your space. It's the fact that you have to set zones within your house. You know, the dining room, yes, for a little while can play both, you know, play the role of both things. But long term, what's going to happen is if you don't separate, you're never going to feel settled. So exactly yeah. what Giselle said, there's so many options nowadays for even the smallest little corner that you, you can just identify, this is a zone that I'm going to dedicate to my space. And the yeah. same goes for you, for your husband, for your kids, like every single person in the house. And now that we're all kind of, you know, living together and working and schooling and everything within the same space, more importantly than ever, um, is it that every single person person has a specific zone that becomes their study space because otherwise you're never going to feel settled and you're never going to be able to feel productive um yes yeah yes. In, that, in that area and so i want to reiterate a couple things that i've heard just to make sure that that like they really landed because i think they're really important giselle i think i love what you talked about um like being flexible enough to to especially right now we're spending a hundred percent of our time at home to look around and see like where is there unused space like maybe there, like maybe there's like maybe we're not playing the records right now, and that's less right. important in our small space than having a dedicated workspace. So being able and willing to be flexible with moving things around and like shifting things to prioritize what's important for you in the moment, right? And mm -hmm. this idea, Melissa, that you were saying about feeling settled, and I think that's really important, and that's why I think that even if you can find a small table or even if you could section off a part of your dining room table somehow with like some kind of like, even if it's like books lined up to the side to divide. Or like a plant or just yours. something. A like, plant, right. exactly. That's, so, you know. so it feels like this is my space and this gets to be like respected so that I can be productive and yeah. feel settled here, right? Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Sarah, do you have anything to add? Look, I'm a stickler for organization. So the way I look at it is your home is a reflection of your mind. Get your shit clean. Like <laughs> clear out your desk. Like Giselle said, have a little plant in your little area. You can have a little nook somewhere, but keep it neat. Keep it clean. I think when everything's cluttered and very messy and things right now are very unsure outside the door of your house, it doesn't help with the anxiety. So yes. just every day, clean up your workspace, keep it neat, put your little plant, have a little picture, like create that little, so that every morning when you wake up, it's nice and neat. It's like your little Zen zones to start yeah. work. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's really important, but really listen, Ikea, like go to Ikea, get a little table, and put or it have in. ikea deliver these days yeah, yeah they, deliver. They, deliver. they deliver yeah you can't go yeah. to ikea but we're deliver. we're having a bookshelf even, delivered even just take yeah just take a shelf from target now they're letting 10 people at a time at target you get a shelf you drill it into the wall look you can do a desk inside your closet like if you have a little walk-in you don't even have to have a walk-in you can just have doors <laughs> you can just 
literally put a shelf in there and put a, a chair that pushes in and you close the doors. Like mm -hmm. there's so many creative ways to have a little space. And, awesome. and you know, awesome. that's, it's, it's pretty simple. Cool. But I think, I think, you know what, I think that's, it's hard for people to wrap their minds around. Um, they think when people think home office, they think like full room, you know, yeah, they, don't, yeah. they don't think that that closet could be, you know, the solution to the problem. Like, that's the one thing that I, I hope if, if anybody, you know, takes away from our conversations today is that you got to kind of think outside the box of what your mind okay. says a home office looks like, because right. it, really, yes. it, really, yeah. it doesn't Amen. have to be so complicated, you know, yeah. it really and, does. And really with small spaces, I always say this, go vertical, go vertical, yes. like up. Just go up, mm -hmm. put your books, put your monitor on the bottom. You can put your books on a shelf on top. You have your keyboard. And then you have a little drawer for all your pens and your like go up, go vertical. Yeah. Everybody yeah. can go shelves, vertical. Shelves, 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 shelves are your all friend. day long. Shelves are your shelves friend. Are all your right, friend. comadres. So I'm going to start sharing the awesome document that you all helped um, oh, to put together. Wow. Oh, um, my God. This looks like a like client like mood board. It's so ah, cute. Thank you, Melissa, for this gorgeous. Melissa. Melissa, look at you. I know. I know. That was just like inspo photos. This inspo. is like a glorified. This is really cute. Totally. But um, I think it'll be fun to all kind of speak to these images as we see them, kind of like if you feel called to like share, like let's all do it together. But these are all images that all of these amazing women helped to put together. But let's start with um, let's start with the essentials. So, okay, let's say I'm ready to put together my little corner desk um, and create my little office space. Even if it's teeny tiny, I am owning it. Yep. What do I need? So you want me to start? You want me to grab Yes, this? kick it off, please. Um, so, you know, we were talking, there are important things that an, a home office requires, but it doesn't need a lot. And, you know, I feel like I've identified... I've worked from home since I graduated from college. So I'm kind of like a pro at this. Yes. Um, and I have been just sell in front of a window, in a corner of my room, you know, all the way into my, into my bedroom. Like I have been the gambit of home offices. So really it doesn't take a lot and it doesn't take a lot for it to be beautiful and inspiring. And again, the idea is that you choose things, not just because they're what's available, but because they, you love them. Everything that in your that's in your house should be something that you absolutely love. And if you don't love it, you should have plans to get freaking rid of it. Because <laughs> there's no need for it to be there. It's only bringing down your you know your vibe and your energy. So, anyways, you don't really need a lot. You need a desk, any any desk, a, a piece of plywood from from Home Depot, a pretty uh, you know shelf from Target, whatever. You need a desk. You need a comfortable chair. You need good light. Can I just can I just pause there on the comfortable chair because I feel like that's something extra important. That there are a lot of that people right now sitting in uncomfortable, uncomfortable chairs. Comfortable chair. So oh. order yourself a comfy yes. chair um, yeah. because your 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 body is hurting, your back is hurting. Um, you are gonna you're sitting here too many hours of the day. Yeah, a you dining chair is not gonna suffice. Yeah. Right. right, a dining chair is not gonna cut it. Um, no. and, it's gonna, and and the chairs honestly, it's happened to me. It's gonna be a trial and error as well. Um, because that chair might be comfortable to sit in for four hours, but once you're sitting in it for eight, it feels totally different. So it might be a trial and error, but to Gabby's point, it's super important to get a comfortable chair. Um, the next is good lighting. My biggest issue in my particular home office um, is the lack of lighting. It's a very dark, cozy room. This, my room was um, originally my husband's, he's an attorney. And so he didn't need what I need, which is tons of light to see colors and fabrics. And, and I, it's, a, it's a really difficult situation I'm in because I never got around. I just, my business grew. And so I, did, I, I kind of had to come over here because I was, I was taking over another area. But anyways, I never got around to fixing it. And so that's always been an issue. So good lighting, whether it's overhead lighting, natural lighting from a window, um, or task lighting with a lamp is super super important the last thing you want is you know for you to damage your eyes then uh you need your supplies um those can come in a bunch of different you know ways that you can organize those supplies 
and you need a good place for storage. Now, not every single uh, career requires paperwork and you know tons of files and books you know to reference textbooks and things like that. So if yours doesn't, then it's even better because you need less storage. Um, but if you need more, then that, that's the other piece. And then you need your tech. What's the important stuff? You know, good Wi-Fi, your printer, your scanners, whatever, you know, lights you're using for your videos and things like that. And that's it. And, and whatever. And then the last and most important is inspirational pieces. And what does that encompass? An artwork, a plant, um, you know, some vintage, a, uh, letter opener that you found you know on a trip it really it's these minimal little details that that all of a sudden you put them together and you have a home office and you have a beautiful like space that's it doesn't so next we're um we just kind of grabbed some select images i think these were the little the like corner hallway um like i so it gives you yeah. a visual of how you can turn a little spot. This is actually exactly what I was talking about on the, on the left. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love, love, love the new trend of closet offices. Yeah, because closet I feel office. like you could, you could close the door when people are over. And if you did leave your desk messy, whatever that day, or nobody's going to see it. Um, and then it opens up to like a little hidden, you know, a little hidden treasure behind it. Like, I love it. And yeah. I think people could have a, you know, very easy to do. It's a very easy DIY office. Mm -hmm. um, if you have, again, if you have the extra space, a little extra linen closet or something that you can make it happen, it, it works really nice. Yeah. But I don't think that stool would be very comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's for, for the vignette picture. shot. It's for, yeah. Some of this is for the picture, y'all. <laughs> spectacular but that poor person's butt is gonna be like oh. <laughs> my desk chair is horrendous but it's so comfortable it's like the only one that's lasted I've had it for like I think over 10 years and I swear by it and it's like the ugliest piece of furniture so I obviously am sitting on this this like most uncomfortable chair just for this but as soon as we're done I'm rolling that bad boy back out here the <laughs> only way and that's yeah. what happens just all right like the ugliest ones are the ones that are the most oh my ugly. god it's i've tried know. everything i've tried them all but this one is like the like the lumbar support like it's just it's got it all so yes yeah they're the, really great the to hear from you guys people the office yes. yeah it's literally this is office depot, depot. y'all and it's awesome <laughs> it works <laughs> Um, it's, I also it's not like cute. this. Um, I like this, like also, like kind of what Giselle is doing right now, right? Like finding a little unused corner, maybe of your dining room or right. your kitchen, yeah. um, and just having a little, a simple shelf or um, table there, and all of a sudden, boom, instant desk. Instant yeah, desk. even over a window, you don't, you don't really need, um, you don't need to make it this like official space that feels permanent. You can put something like. You know, you go to Shell Lumber and ask them, you know, you call them and say, hey, I need, you know, three feet by whatever your measurements are. And they'll make you just like a little slab of wood and you can just install it and it yeah. could be temporary. It doesn't have to live there forever. It can go back to being whatever that space was. Maybe that was your bar or whatever. Like yeah. that, this corner, typically these like little corners tend to be, you know, a bar card or something along those lines. And you can just make it like a little, a little desk space. I mean, in, in a dream world, we have those floor to ceiling windows that I soon have, but you know, yes. I'm staring at a white wall. It is someday, it is. someday. I, I, oh, go ahead. No, I, I was saying, I think the other point to, to that photo too, is to kind of, you know, in this particular example, it's about thinking outside of the box. Right. And some people sometimes would see a window and be like, I can't put a desk in front of a full window like that. I need a wall. Like I need the bottom yeah. to be solid yeah. and nope. the window could be on top but the bottom has to be solid no you can and you should consider even something like that um and where that comes into play a lot a lot is in bedrooms yes. um where you have sliding glass doors maybe you have big doors that you don't use the whole door but you know you use half the door the other half you can actually put something in front it's not ideal and that's the one thing that we all have to kind of like wrap our, our minds around at this point nothing about this situation we're in is ideal, but we have to make the best of it. Yes, and in making the definitely. best of it, let's find the solutions that are gonna, you know, be the most practical 
and the, and are going to make us feel the best within, you know, our yeah. space. Right. So um, yeah. we have about 20 minutes left and I want to make sure that we see through all these slides. So we're going to go a little quicker. This I was so excited about. Look oh at God, this adorable. <laughs> homeschooling concept board. Yes. Oh my God, how cute yes. is this? <laughs> love it. I love the little headphones on the table. How cute. <laughs> Melissa, That's tell awesome. us more. So this, you know, this idea came because I saw like, I saw something on TV and it was all four kids like sitting in a dining room table and the poor mom was like, had the basket of laundry over here and she had like, you know, a bunch of groceries in the kitchen that she still hadn't packed away and, I, and it was just utter chaos. And I'm just like thinking to myself, oh my God, this is real, like this is reality and this is how we're living right now. So um, how can we find solutions to problems that encompass something like that, right? We're all four kids, you have four kids and they're all having to homeschool. Nobody has good Wi-Fi in their bedroom, so they all gotta congregate outside. Or there is, you know, two kids in one room and the other one is a baby and shares, whatever. So I wanted to find concepts and things that could be um, modular and mobile where when it's time for schooling, we can put them together. When it's not, you can, you know, make them become something else. And I saw these, um, these go-kart sort of rolling tables. They're actually counter height. So it's a perfect height to have inside of a kitchen or any kind of a dining space um, that are, you know, that are just mobile. You can put them together. All four kids can sit around. They have plenty of workspace. And then when school's over, you can either use them as a kitchen island, you can, you know, roll them together, right. put them, you know, vertically or horizontally next to each other where, you know, they can line up in a row, you can have an eat-in counter, uh, you can take them outside and serve them as a buffet at the bar. They're super cute and they're really inexpensive. I think they're like 120 bucks for each table. Um, and it's one of those things that like, awesome. you solve a problem. Yeah, love it time you, it's functional and it can work in a hundred different other ways. very versatile and exactly. the, the awesome thing i think there's also an important point because we've been talking a lot about us getting work done but um children are essentially getting work done from school from home as well now right and so to the extent like a lot of the same tips and things that we've been talking about apply to them how do they yeah. have a dedicated space to focus and get their homeschool done. No, like right? Melissa, I'm about to snatch that idea like right quick. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I would use that. I would use that outside of the buffet and then bring it inside for the kids to work. Bring it and inside. then you keep those for a million other things. I'm sure. Yes. Where can you get for the those, kids' Melissa, play times or where did you get those? So those are from CB2. Um, they have them in white. They have them in black. And, and they're just rolling the rolling carts. It's called, I think it's called the go kart rolling table or rolling something or other. I can okay, cool. have think later so you girls can can take a look at it. But super inexpensive okay. and just you know awesome. I love the idea. I loved it. Loved it. Yeah. Awesome. I need I need four kids to implement. It, but <laughs> you know what? The little, doing it. the little now. I don't know that like the ages of your kids, but as the kids get, I don't older, have any. It's just the dog, so I can't complain. But. <laughs> He's been super low maintenance too. <laughs> That's good. So I, I feel bad. I'm like complaining about my husband, but it's so quiet here. So yeah, can't say anything. So next up, I know that um, this was around like if you were to create, if you, if you needed to put your home office in your bedroom, how you could separate that space energetically and also physically, right? Right. Um, so this one, and I think uh, maybe Rera was the one who said, or well, whoever, um, about creating a, you know, some sort of plant to like block divider, the yeah, other uh, divider. So these are room, these are examples of room dividers, and you know, you can get as fancy as something that's built in, um, like you know, this floating wall, which is spectacular. I, I need to yeah. do this in my bedroom, but anyways, I saw this and I thought, man, this is like such an awesome idea because you get the flow and the air and all of it coming through, but you still have, you know, a physical, you know, barrier between one space and another and it's, and you can't see it. So, you know, things that are built in like bookshelves and things like that, that you can do woodwork, or you can get things again that are modular and mobile. The key in a, in a bedroom 
is that the furniture that you pick is multifunctional. So, you, you know, let's take a, a little girl's room, you know, or, or a tween's room. Her desk should also work as a vanity. So, you know, you have that one piece of furniture that serves multi-purpose. Yes. And so if you're fortunate enough to have a room where, you know, it's spacious enough that you, you can put a divider, you should do it because, you know, being able to separate sleep from work is so important for your anxiety and for your just well-being and all mm -hmm. of it. Um, if all of it is happening inside that same room, then, you know, things like rare, things have to be uber organized because if not, it's going to feel like stuff is just falling on you. Um, but these are super easy things. They have those, you have cane screens, you have all these, you know, um, vertical plant walls that you can put. There's a million things to use as dividers. You just got to get creative. Awesome. I want to jump into the, the if, for those that are fortunate enough to have like a little, a little private room, maybe in the back that you can dedicate to, to a home office. Melissa, tell us more about what you were thinking with this example. So, you know, so if you're lucky enough to have space and budgets and all of those things, um, my God, there are so many beautiful, you know, solutions for completely separate spaces from your home. It, something to be said about getting up in the morning, grabbing your coffee and going to work, not just, you know, walking into your room while the kids are screaming and everything. So, you know, there's a lot of different things you can use now. They have um, you know, the, the garden offices or, you know, traditional tea sheds that you can build in the back. They have shipping containers, you know, that you can, you can retrofit them to turn them into office spaces. People use those a lot within buildings. Um, and they're, they're so cool. If, if you've gone to Wynwood, I think there's like an entire market, outdoor market, that's all shipping containers and people run their little yes, stores. Yes, 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 yes. It's really cute. And then, I mean, the most amazing is the RV and the Airstream you know, home offices where people convert those and put them in their backyard and that becomes their home office. So again, there's so many opportunities. This is such a topic I'm passionate about because it's, it could be so fun and it doesn't have to be, you know, something where, oh, all my papers are falling on me and whatever. Yeah. You can be creative and you right. can do a lot with, you know, with uh, what's out there. Awesome. Yeah, these are dreamy. Oh, so dreamy. I've already signed mine. <laughs> and, and, also, I, and also, I just want to say, I just want to say from a real estate perspective, when you show people in your house that you have dedicated spaces, like Melissa's describing, people see the value, you'd be surprised. Like, oh, look, there's a home office here. Oh, look, this is a playroom. Oh, look. And then all of a sudden, your home becomes more desirable. Like yes. people think people don't look at those things, but people do look at those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. A hundred percent. So, yeah. And so now we move into um, Rebe's submission. So Rebe, you want to tell us a little bit of what, what we're looking at? So, yeah, this is, this is just my master. I converted a garage into my master. Um, but you see my little home office. That's it. I just put a little desk. It's like three feet wide, not even in a corner um, with a painting, you know, with a, with a newspaper paper print that my grandfather had brought from Cuba something that meant something to me and a really comfy chair that chair is from Ikea I think it's 60 bucks it's full cushioned out and that's it. I don't have storage I don't even have shelves I have two little drawers and I work there and when I go there in that little corner of my room it's just like it's always really neat and I, it's just my little my little spot so it's really easy to do that doesn't take a lot that that desk is a vintage desk from my mother-in-law's house that I just took and with a magic marker, fix <laughs> all the like scratches on it. You're like, getting all the tips and tricks. I do that all, all the time. Like, There's no repainting yeah. furniture. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then here are some other images that you sourced. Tell us about yeah, what you that day We talked about the shelving. Here's one. Then, you know, some people have stairs. They don't know what to do with um, the space under their stairs. You can create a little nook in there, a little workspace in there. I yeah. think if you keep, yeah. Somebody just got on Very and they're cool. asking. Got, like, um, live edge. Somebody just got on and they said, well, where can we find small desks like that? I just got on Ikea, right? Affordable? Yeah. Yes. Ikea. Yes. I, I Ikea. Target. And Target. Target. And Target. Target, I think, is probably, I mean, the quality might, I feel like Target, some of this stuff every now and then, 
like hit yeah. or miss. But for desks, I feel like, and Ikea, you can customize, like you can do different legs. You can do like a light wood leg. You can do the metal leg. You can do, you can yeah. kind of uh, make it unique to like your style. Another, another really cool source, if you guys, you know, wanted to try is um, Etsy. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. if you're looking for something a little bit more handmade and rustic, if you need, and, and unique, and something unique and unique, and support maybe, small biz so, for sure. Right, yeah, support small business. You need like a, a small piece of, of wood. You know, there's tons of of little shops on Etsy that that you can order those things customized, and the turnaround time is a couple of weeks at most, and and they turn out to be great and super easy to put together. Yes. Honestly, um, even just I, driving around and seeing if there's, like, I can't tell you how much of my furniture is like, like from. You're fine because people dispose of it. I, I can't even tell you. I, yeah, well, it's like 90% nine, like, of my furniture is, is used from like an estate sale, garage sale, something yes. that we found on the side of the road. And the other thing, um, so some, so the a question that we're getting is, is there going to be a list of all the stores and supplies? I would recommend that you all, so all of the, um, the Instagrams for these three incredible women are listed right here on the post. So please go ahead and follow them and get in touch with them directly um, for ideas and, um, and just kind of like any specific questions that you have about, about what you're looking at. And you guys might, I would, I would say, having a fun Gabby, chat. I would. I would just say to that, if people are gonna go uh, reach out to me on my page, uh, you can just ask me design questions if you're thinking of designing and bringing the most value to your house uh, for future resale. I yes. think I'd be the good the person to reach out. Awesome for awesome. that. You know, Melissa yes. and Giselle more for the design, for but the design. Me for what what's gonna bring you the most value if you put money into your house or into your Beautiful. spaces. Yeah. And this, we're now we're looking at another example of kind of like a really cozy, um, mm -hmm. like a little corner that you wouldn't have fit. And, and so many homes mm -hmm. have that almost like natural built in shelving that you can, mm -hmm. if it's like deep enough, it could also be a desk and an office space, right? right. I love right. this chair. That's so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's like so beautiful. And I also wanted to mention we have done websites, but websites that sell massive amounts of stuff that you can get for dirt cheap. Just an example, Wayfair and Joss and Maine. My bed, I fell in love with my bed. It was $3,000 on a website. Couldn't afford it. And I found the exact same bed. It's not real iron, but the exact same bed I paid $350, $350. Wow. And Where? it gives you the same on Wayfair. It gives Unwayfair. you the same look. I you saved the that. picture from the account I liked and I looked up and it's yeah. not real iron. That's why it's not $3,000, but it literally looks, if I put two pictures next to each other, they're identical. Yes. So those are websites that have a lot of options that are very affordable as well. And it's easy shipping to your house and they don't yeah. upcharge you like Ikea would for the, for the delivery. Got it. Got it. Um, I just so. noticed that um, Giselle and Melissa source the same photo. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I saw it and I was like, that's my girl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right, I please. mean, that is like my favorite. Um, I also have the physical version of it. <laughs> 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 From her, her book. Oh my God, you have to get it. It's so much inspiration in here. I love um, it. Or, or you can borrow it. I'll, I'll drop it <laughs> off in like a Ziploc bag with gloves and the whole thing. <laughs> I'm kind of um, multi -hyphen. She's mega multi-hyphen. She's, so, uh, she's my favorite. She's um, my favorite, yeah. Um, um, I think like, this is a cool example because I think for the creatives out oh, there, um, oh. they might need to just like explode yeah. in everything that inspires them and take over half of the living room and it's your house, do what you want. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I think like Hebe said a point earlier that I kind of live by which is like go vertical um in our office that we converted we had a really tiny office space um in it's not in my home but in where I rent office space I think it's honestly might be 80 square feet and myself and my best friend share the space so we had to get so creative with how to put anything up I'm extremely visual I need to see things in front of me so I constantly want like a cork board or something in front of me. You may be really hesitant to put something like this, install it on your wall. So I recommend, um, I kind of have one right next to me. I don't know if you can see it, but this is just a DIY project. It's literally styrofoam with burlap over it. 
And then I painted the burlap so that it's kind of like a similar color to my wall. So I can move this around wherever I want. And like wherever mm -hmm. I'm stationed, I just kind of bring it with me so that, I mean, I've been That's here idea. lately. I just take it with me so that I have a place to like visually see, like I put my calendar on here. I put, you know, the projects I'm working on, like I pin everything up there. Awesome. So that's like a good source. Um, I can send you guys the DIY video on how to make those. Um, super easy, literally made three of them in one afternoon. It was really, really fun. And all of the stuff got delivered to me. So um, I didn't have to go anywhere to get the supplies. I literally just did that now as a quarantine solution. So for me, a huge tip for all of this is just like, you know, it, like still like your inspiration, your mood boards, maybe you did like the board ritual recently and you want to pin it up and see it and like visualize it. That is like a must for me. Um, even in my home office, I didn't want to sacrifice that. So I made these. Um, so yeah, I mean, same thing, like just making sure, like using the walls, get like go vertical, like mm -hmm. installing shelving, a uh, container store, Ikea has great shelving solutions. The Elster I think it's El not Elster, Elf, Alpha, Alpha system by the container store. It's not yes. the most affordable, but it is so easy to make it yourself. And if you have a small area and you don't want to put something permanent, like install, you're, you know, maybe you can't do millwork right now. You can't install a custom built-in shelf at the moment. You order those pieces and they online will, will create the system for you and you DIY it and you can create some shelving. That right there is Alpha, the one to the right. That's awesome. Um, I feel like there's hair. so many people that ha are complaining that they don't have any room that have bare walls in their house. Yeah, exactly. And so it's a reminder, like, look around yeah. you. If you have a ton of bare walls, you have room. Like, it's yeah. not just floor space. Yeah, you can them. kind of use them and, like, build, use storage in, on your walls. That's what we mean by go vertical. Yeah. And I guarantee right. that some people, maybe not everybody, it'll be a temporary solution. And then maybe they'll take it down and put that artwork or that mirror or whatever they had on right. there. But some of you are probably going to keep this because you're going to end up styling it up, putting all your books on there, making it really cute. And you'll like, it'll become a vignette in your home that you end up loving. Yes, 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 yes. Having it be so, inspirational. I wanted to add, um, you know, for your, for your sort of mood board type of thing. Um, when I lived in the house prior to, and I was in front of a little window in the dining room, I had one of those like Parsons tables from West Elm that, that we still have actually. What I did was I had made a piece of glass that sat on top, which, which protected, you know, the, the, the material of, of right. the table. But what I used to do is layered between the glass and the actual top of, of the table, I would <gasps> put my mood board there. So I would cut out all my images. Oh, I love that. And you put it on your desk. Gorgeous. That's that gorgeous. is adorable. I yeah. love that. So when I would move the computer and stuff, everything would be there. And, you know, I love needed that. to be creative. So I needed to. Yeah. Like, yes. Just like, I literally, it. like, my husband laughs. I'm, like, running, walking around, just, like, moving. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, like, I think it's five feet tall. It's, like, my size. So it's kind of funny. Awesome. So, yeah, that that's definitely another. Um, I we, we haven't really invested in art yet. We haven't, like, pulled the plug. Um, we have a few pieces we have our eye on, but art is so expensive. So yeah. for me, I've kind of been enjoying also just seeing, actually having something on my bare-ass walls right now. <laughs> um, but I love that for, for our office. That's awesome. That's, uh, awesome. Great idea. Cool. Comadres, this has been such a fun conversation. And I think like such, truly, I feel like such a breath of fresh air because there's like so much heaviness right now. And for us oh. to spend an hour just like joyfully talking about beautiful spaces. But I think like when we really think about it, what we have been talking about today is really profound because we have been talking about how you create space for how you're going to take care of your family right? Like uh -huh. this is the place that you sit down to really kind of be the best version of you and birth new things and new projects and new ideas. And you deserve to have this be a dedicated space, even if it's small, where you, where it feels like you, where you're excited about it, where it has things that you love and things that you need. And it just kind of brings you joy because I think like we all need some freaking joy right now and we get yeah. to grab onto it with both hands and not let go. Um, and I am just so grateful to all of you for sharing this conversation with us, for kind of being here with us. So um, if you uh, liked what these ladies were, were sharing, 
highly, highly recommend to follow the, all of them on Instagram. I geek out on it all the time. And um, we have also uh, included in the post a link uh, for donations for our community. So if you're interested in donating to the community as a whole or to any of these women in particular, please go ahead and use that link. We're all feeling kind of the moment right now. And so if you are interested in making a donation, you can go and do it right there. Um, but for now, that's all. You guys, thank you so, so much for, for thank being Thank you. Here. This was so this fun. Was super fun. Yeah, yeah. It was a good um, break in the day. I'm so totally inspired now. I'm like, right, let's see what else I'm going to do with my whole office. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I so know. We'll I'm you. on this call and I'm thinking, do I have to rework my home? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've reworked this thing like 10 times. Like it's, it's a new corner every day. Hello. It's fun. It's part Girl. of the fun. Oh, yeah. I have a 500 pound Marlin, which I will put. A <laughs> oh, yes. What? Can, Listen, you, can you flip? Okay, can you, are you on a monitor that you can flip right now? No. Thank God. Okay, I'm you glad. need to send that picture because I have seen <laughs> I this thing. I want to see it. And it's massive. And it's hanging above no. Melissa's head right now. Oh, it's God. Right above my head. And so if anybody can make we'll it. We'll share work. a picture. Yes, yes. yes. All right, guys. Oh, doing Thank it. You. You're doing Thank it. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye.